Hello everybody, welcome back to our Let's Keep It Real. Oh my gosh, I have been waiting for so long, so long to have this beautiful lady here, Christina Bueri. Seriously, I feel like, you know, you know when you are, you know, next to your idol and then you just get nervous? That's how I feel next to you. Oh, that's yeah. cool. You can tell it's crazy, but it's exactly how I feel. I feel nervous next to you. Oh, stop. <laughs> Seriously, I admired this woman so, so much. And when I asked her to be here tonight and uh, share, you know, her story, because Christine is the owner of Wrestling Limousine, I would thought that, as you saw, right, as a female entrepreneur, advice for aspiring business owners, because this woman, Rocks, and she's gonna share a lot of tips here for us tonight. Thank you, Christina, sure. for being here. And she's gonna share with us, you know, how she grew her business, restaurant limousine, from five cars to 250 cars, 400 employees in five different cities. Wow, wow. I'll take my hats off to you. So, Christina, tell me a little bit about your personal background. I hear you have lived all over the world. Okay, so I was born in Japan. My parents were teaching English in Kobe. So I lived in Japan two years, and that was actually my first language. I spoke Japanese. And from there, we were. Uh, my father joined the Foreign Service, and we moved to Brazil. Brazil. And I have always had a fondness for Cuba because... I speak Portuguese and I lived in Brazil six years. So living in Brazil was amazing. We got to live in Rio, right on the beach. We lived in Sao Paulo. We lived in Belém do Pará. And then from there, we were transferred to Portugal. Lived in Portugal three years, traveled all over Europe on this, in the summers, um, mostly camping. My parents were very frugal. So uh, we camped and we ate homemade sandwiches in Paris and Spain and wherever we went, and then we were transferred to Africa, and we lived in Africa 10 years. So the first country was Mozambique, which was another Portuguese-speaking country, but in 1974, they, 75, they got independence, and we had to move in the middle of the night. We, all the diplomats had to leave. Uh, my father was transferred to South Africa. We lived in South Africa for three years. Um, and it was under apartheid. So my parents didn't want us children going to uh, all white schools. And so they shipped us off to Swaziland for boarding school. And that's where I went to boarding school with wow. the children of Nelson Mandela and Desmond Tutu. That's amazing. And uh, for me, that was probably the biggest life-changing moment where I was living in a community as a minority, a minority because I'm white and a minority because I was a Christian. And I think when you have that experience at a young age and then you get to travel around the world and back to the U.S., you never forget what that yeah. felt like yeah. and you never treat anyone else differently. And, and I think it's a great point, Christina, because you get to see life from a different perspective when you travel, right? That's, that's very impressive. And you still, how many languages do you speak now? Well, I used to speak Portuguese fluently. I really she do still not. speak Portuguese fluently, I by the way. I understand it. <laughs> Um, I used to speak French pretty well, but I'd never get to practice it. And I can pretty much understand Spanish. I understand a little Norwegian, which is where my family's from. I understand quite a bit of Arabic, having been married to a Lebanese man for 19 years. And, um, and then there's always Japanese, so uh, multilingual family. Wow. I heard Japanese is hard language to learn. Oh my gosh. Yes. Well, I take my hats off for you, lady. Wow, that's impressive. Follow that, right? So how did you get started as a business owner? So that's kind of a crazy story. I went to George Washington University and I wanted to follow in my father's footsteps. So I went I, I got a degree in international affairs and my goal was to join the Foreign Service. But my senior year in college, I was given an internship with the Overseas Education Fund. And they sent me back to Africa to work in Kenya and Somalia on projects to uplift the status of women. So I was really excited about that. And I took that job. I, I went to back to Africa and I worked on an agroforestry project that was funded by the U.S. government. And after two years working on that project, I basically decided that that wasn't really what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So I came back to the States and the only job I could find was 100% commission sales advertising. Hmm. So I went to work for an advertising firm and I was cold calling out of the yellow pages 
and I got an appointment with William Bouary, who owned Rest in Limousine, to sell him an ad. So he gave me that appointment, and um, he kept asking me to come back and come back before I could close that deal. Right. But I finally did, and the night that he wrote me the check for the ad, he invited me out to dinner. He said, you want to go get a bite to eat? And I was like, sure. So we went out to, uh, this was at the, the Hyatt Reston in Reston, Virginia. We went to sort of a fine dining restaurant, Market Street Bar and Grill, which is no longer in business. But um, we had a great date, and then we decided to get together again. Long story short, uh, in about three months, he said, quit your job and wow. come work for me. And I said, okay. Uh, he said, I can't afford to pay you, but I'll pay your bills. And I thought, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> So, uh, and I love the limousine business, right. and so I went to work for William, and the first thing I said was, why don't we do weddings? Right. And, you know, he was Lebanese, and is Lebanese, and he said, I don't like to deal with brides. Oh, my God. And I was like, I'll deal with brides. Women love weddings. We like to plan them. We like to be in them. We like to get married. We like to, we like anything to do with weddings. Yeah. So, um, I bought lists of brides, and I cold called them, and within a year, we're doing hundred weddings a weekend. Oh my gosh. And then you say by the time that you guys, that you start to work with him, you know, you, he only had five, five cars, five cars. Wow. That's it's just amazing. And so then we kind of had a lucky break because we had an office at the Reston Town Center and a, a driver knocked on our door one day and said, would you like to bid on a shuttle contract? I work for a company and their bus breaks down every day. And if you guys want to do it, I can get you the contract and we said sure so that was our first shuttle contract and then another lucky break was another driver came and knocked on our door and said do you want to bid on a government contract wow. and we were like what's a government contract and he said well my wife works at usgs in reston they have two vans going back and forth to dc all day long and if you win i'd like to be a driver so i bid on that contract and i won and i hired john croston as my driver and i thought to myself there have to be more government contracts. Absolutely, especially in GC, right? The fall, so the government buildings and everything. I started researching government contracts and I found out that every government agency had an inner city bus route connecting their buildings. And so now we had, we had our first government contract and with a nice reference from them, we pretty much won every con government contract in the city for the next five years. So from uh, the day I started, to the, to the first 10 years that we worked together, I grew that business from um, about 200000 in revenue to $5 million in revenue. Wow. That's just so amazing. With everything that you say, so what are some of the biggest business lessons you have learned over the years? So once we got to those 10 years, um, we decided that my husband would stay home with the kids and I would run the business. Uh, and that was because I loved it. I was energized by it, I was writing the proposals, I was managing all the contracts, and he was a little tired and a little burnt out from the business. So we decided he'd be a stay-at-home father, which was great, because when you have four kids, it's Somebody great stay to home have with one the parent kids, right? stay home with the kids. So that was a life-changing moment for me, because then at the, from that point on, it was really, you know, everything was my responsibility. And about six months later, 9-11 happened, which was a terrible situation for not only our country, but for many of us in business, because our business came to a standstill. And for the next five years, we really didn't even make a profit. And uh, I didn't really know how I was going to keep everything together. But I just kept thinking that if anything happens to rest in the limousine, and I'm running it, and my husband's home with the kids, it's going to be blamed on me. Blaming you. And so it was that female sort of like not wanting to give up and not wanting to put my family in a situation where we lost our business right. and probably our house right. that just kept me fighting to recover from that. So um, those were the toughest times. But then about after those five years were up, we started really growing again. And so the next 10 years, I grew the company to $17 million wow. And... Uh, that's when I asked for a divorce, and I got a loan, and I bought my ex-husband out of the company. And so since then, it's been uh, about six or seven years, and 
I've grown it to 28 million. Oh my gosh, that's so amazing. Well, and that is with a beautiful team of people at work. I know, I know that you surround yourself one, you know, the best of the best. And that's important too, right? Because, you know, it's hard to run a business, so you have to have the right people around you. But I wasn't here in the country, you know, by the time, the 2011, so, but I, I understand that it was a big crash on the economy at the time, and I'm sure it wasn't only you facing, you know, the challenge. You know, a lot of business owners were still at you know the same situation yes. and it's just like i'll take my hats off for you lady because again you know like you say you do not want to let your family down and exactly because you're the one running the business you could say well just because she's a female exactly. you know right because we we yes. care this with us no matter what right because we talk about this in the past and of course being a, a, a woman entrepreneur as well and i can't see that you know, sometimes men doesn't take us as serious as they'll take, a, you know, another man, right? Yes. You know, they always just challenge us. So what's the business tip that you can give to a female entrepreneur? So I, um, I think my first tip would be to do a lot of networking. Uh, the first 10 years I was in business, I, I didn't have time to network. I was always busy at the office doing something, whether it was still maybe taking a reservation or dispatching or doing payroll. Uh, it wasn't until 9-11 that we became so slow that there was nothing for me to do at the office, and so I started networking. So I got out there. It wasn't easy in the beginning. I was not very comfortable with it. I didn't know anybody, and I had to force myself to go to these events. So I made it a goal to go to four events a week. And that's what I was going to ask you is how you make time to go to the network. So you made a goal. Um, I made a goal and you know, I didn't get business overnight. But one thing that I got was I got so many gifts. I learned about I learned about better vendors. Um, I met a banker who approved a loan in twenty four hours. I uh, was learning about trends in the marketplace. I learned about LinkedIn and social media. And I jumped in and I started using all these tools like the minute I could. And so I really became an early adopter to all of those new ideas. And I joined a mastermind, I joined a business book club, and I joined a peer group. So joining that peer group, that was not until 2007. The one I joined is called Vistage, and you have to do more than $3 million in sales to, to qualify. Right. Um, and it's a little pricey. You pay 3000 to get in, and then it's 1500 a month. So to work it. It's not cheap, but you take a day off work, and you meet with 18 other CEOs. And in the morning, you have a sort of Harvard MBA quality speaker. And then in the afternoon, you solve each other's business problems. And so I honestly believe that is where I learned how to grow my business, how to hire better employees, how to manage my time, I learned everything I needed to know about accounting, um, you know, rolling. And I'm glad that you shared that, Christina, because be, being a business owner sometimes it can feel very lonely. Oh, right? very. Very, very lonely. And I can speak for myself. And then that's important that we can surround ourselves, like I said, with the support system, yes. right? And you found the support system to the network. And then also coaches, right? Because right. even if you're a smart business woman, you know, you need to get advice also of from someone that's always going to have somebody out there that know more than you, you know, and I know. Yes. Right? And I wanted to recommend some different peer groups because I know Vistage isn't for everyone. I, um, I'm very familiar with um, WPO, which is Women's Presence Organization. They also have a peer group. Uh, NABO, which is the National Association of Women Business Owners, they have many, many learning opportunities. Uh, and there's Entrepreneurs Organization. So I really recommend that you find the peer group that is good for you, and you start to meet with these other entrepreneurs once a month. And you, you use each other as a support system. You learn from each other and you solve your business problems with them. Yeah. That was huge for you me. Know, a lot of people out there, if you're in business, you see, uh, you know, you're always intimidated by your competitors, mm -hmm. right? And I remember when I started my catering business, that's how I met Christina. I was catering for her company, Western Limousine. She hired me to do her holiday party. That's how I met 
her. I remember when I started my business, you know, and then I had to, I, I signed up for NACES, National Association of Gators. I signed up for ISIS, in the, uh, International Event Society. Yes. So only when I start to network with people in my industry, meeting DJs, photographer, videographer, people in the same sphere, that we always talk to the same people, mm -hmm. that helped me with my business. You'll be surprised, you know, how much people will share, you know, about their business with yes. you, right? Yeah, for example, when we do a bridal show, um, we're there talking to brides all day, but we end up probably getting more business from the other vendors at the bridal show than even the brides because we're all doing weddings. We right. all need to refer other uh, vendors to our brides, and so there's a lot of great business to be had when you're networking. But the other thing that I noticed was that 85% of my clients are women. And what I mean by that is the person ordering a limousine or a bus is usually a woman. So that is at work, an executive assistant or an HR manager or an office manager, yep. which are typically women's roles. And then at home, it's the wife, sister, mother, girlfriend. It's the women in the families that are the event planners. And it's the women at work that are the event planners. And so I always did a lot of networking with women's organizations. And so... I even had a, an employee that worked for me, and I sent her out to about eight women's networking events a month. Wow. And one day she came to me and said, why don't we do our own event? And I said, oh, no way. That's not going to happen. She's like, I'll plan the whole thing. All you have to do is show up and introduce a speaker. And I was like, no, 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 no. I don't want the stress. I can't do that. So for six months, I told her no. And finally, I gave in, and we started Sterling Women, which is a monthly networking lunch for women. It's amazing. Started it 11 years ago, and the first month we thought maybe 40 women would show up, and we got 80. The next month we got 100, 100 women came. The third month it was 150, and by December we had 200 women come to our monthly networking lunch. Listen, this lady here, she's a connector. And I have attended many times the Sterling Women. I have been able to meet so many amazing, when I say amazing women, through, you know, the Sterling Women. It's just, you know, I, I don't know. I, I look around. It's just like all those ladies, you know, all these smart ladies. And the majority of them, like, they had their own books. And it's just, it's impressive to see that, you know, high caliber women in the same room every month. So right? I really believe I created the, the perfect networking event for women. And the reason why I say that is there's one hour of shopping. And the reason why I put that in there is because I never have time to shop. So when I go to a networking event and they're selling things, purses, perfume, you know, makeup, candles, I buy everything because I don't have time to shop. So my lunch has one hour of shopping. And so women who sell products display their, their, their products at the lunch. And so we have about 20 vendors. We shop and network for an hour. Then we sit down and we have a speaker who owns a multi-million dollar business give a 20-minute speech. And then we have 50 door prizes. And can I tell you that I have never even asked anyone to donate a door prize? They just and they bring, just bring them. They just bring. It's it always, you know, nice door prizes. Oh Very my gosh! Nice. I just, you know, every time I'm there, I'm crossing my fingers. And we have designer purses. We have a gift from Tiffany's, who has been a sponsor since for 11 years. We have um, all sorts of facials and massages and IPL for your face. We have weight loss products, lots of wine, lots of chocolates. Art, it's amazing, the door prizes. Yeah. But Christina, you know, the thing is, you are a magnetic person. You are. You know, Christina is a giver, you know. I, I, I always tell her, I say, Christina, you have to learn also to accept as well because she, she likes to give, give, give. She's always, you know, as busy as she is, she always connecting people, introducing people. Look who's talking. No, no, because <laughs> I learn, I'm learning from you. Because when I tell you that you are my idol, you are my idol. And I really mean, folks, you know, how many times have seen me here telling me that I have somebody as my idol. I have invited a lot of people. There is a lot of great people there. But, you know, I met you exactly like two years after I came to this country, you know. And, you know, another day we were talking and she was just saying, you like it. it's just like it's so impressive, you know. Because I also feel proud because, you know, 12 years, it just it feels like, wow, I had accomplished so much. And what I know about you back in those days was uh, it wasn't just my holiday parties you were catering you were catering catering for 
smart CEO. I was running into you all over town. And what I thought was so impressive was even as the owner of your company, you went to those events and you made sure everything was perfect. Yeah. And of course, you're a very beautiful woman. And you, to just you. see you there, um, you know, watching your team, quality control, it was very impressive. No, my, my thing is, you know, and I'm sure you feel the same way, you know, as a business owner, sometimes we have to wear all the hats. And if I, if I, if I ask somebody to do something, I, I, I have to to do it as well that's my take right as a business owner and uh but it's just been a, you know such a pleasure to getting to know you better you know because we started a relationship as a business and now i feel like we got friends right yes, we're yeah. friends now it's just amazing i'm just learning every day and by the way i'm wearing one of her beautiful I know jackets it's not that sweet it's like <laughs> and look i love the ears too this is not mine but i thought this is beautiful too she just like you know you're beautiful you're beautiful so listen i know that you share some you know like tips and uh, resource like networking just good ideas just to help women but you know what else you can share so to women become you know better business owners right because like you know as a woman sometimes we wear a lot of hats right yes. so wife entrepreneur you know have so much going on in our lives right well, I think that uh, there's so much advice I can give. I mean, I would say one of the most important things is to be a lifelong learner. Always be reading books, taking seminars, um, following trends. Make sure you're on top of everything that's going on in your industry. That's really important. And um, through the networking, you're going to meet people that can really help you. So the goal really through networking would be to get on a board. So today, I've been in business 29 years, and I'm on 10 boards. Oh, my God. And it's really through the board level networking. That is where I've really met the people that could in introduce me to the opportunities to grow my business. So definitely do the networking, do the learning, and make it your goal to do the board level networking. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to give more tips on how to get that accomplished. Yeah. But that's really important. And I think as a woman... You really have to get over the fear of being in a room full of men. I mean, honestly, I've been in, in a male-dominated industry for a very long time, and I'm so used to it. It's like, and that's another reason why I love going to women's events, because at work, I'm surrounded by men. When I go to my industry, I'm surrounded by men. When I go to a board meeting, often I'm the only woman in the room. So, you know, women just have to really sort of, toughen up a little bit mm -hmm. and also have more confidence because the women's point of view is so important. Honestly, the men in my Visage group, they use me as a resource. They're like, what should I buy my wife for Christmas? And where should I take my wife to dinner? Mm -hmm. And, you know, what should I get her for her birthday? I mean, and or they'll, they'll want a private chef or something. Right. They come to me for everything. Because I know everybody. I think one of the reasons that sometimes women, uh, us as women, we get intimidated if we are in the field that there's a lot more men than women. It's just because the way sometimes they look at us, they don't think like, actually you mentioned on a story one time that you went to a show, right? Yeah, that's story. a crazy story. Yeah. So I went to the limousine convention a couple of years after I got divorced. And I, I one of my boyfriends, went, my boyfriend at the time went with me. And uh, we're walking around the convention floor looking at limousines and buses and we're getting in and out of all these vehicles and the salesperson would only communicate with yeah, my boyfriend right they would they would look at him and say do you like the car what do you like about it what don't you like about it and i just shook my head and thought if they only know that knew that i'm the right, one buying right, right. and it just annoyed me and so i wouldn't buy from them because they're just, you know, uh, I don't blame you. If I was them, I would do their homework because Why? I have the eighth largest limousine service in the country. Why don't they look at that list and make sure they're not pissing someone right, off? Right, absolutely. I yeah. Because when I went to National Association Speaker uh, Video Lab Conference all the way to Arizona, and then when I got there, it was a lot of men, women as well, but the majority were men. So I remember for lunchtime, I sat on the table and... I was the only woman. Earlier, you know, during the event, I had met this guy, Gary, and we were talking, and I was sharing him on what I had learned so far about video, making videos to improve my business, right? So we sat at this table, I swear, 
none of these men talked to me. Everybody was talking with each other, but they did not talk to me. So one point, I think Gary felt bad. I started to tell them what I've been doing. They started to ask me for advice, and yes. just because they realized I knew more than they knew about mm -hmm. that topic, you know, doing videos just to leverage your business. I wasn't happy at all. You, you know, know, we just have to speak up, yep. and we have to have confidence. Yep. Honestly, I, I didn't used to have confidence. It was something that came to me later. Um, but you just have to, women have to own how special we are. I mean, yeah. we are actually great business owners. We we are empathetic. We care. We listen. We're collaborators. We are peacemakers. So when you're running a business, um, a woman typically has a very great approach to most problems. And we're great multitaskers. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's face it. We're already yeah. running our households. Mm -hmm. We're managing our kids, all their schedules, the social life, the work, getting the house clean, groceries. Women are managing a lot. So you put her in a business and she's going to excel because we, we're born with these skills. Right. And uh, we just have to be more confident and own and what that. I had learned, Christina, over the years that people do business with people that they like. Exactly. You know, sometimes people even pay a little bit extra, a little bit more, but if they end, they're going to deal with someone that they, they like, right? Well, yeah. that's the beauty of social media yeah. because mm -hmm. social media has really evened the, the playing field for all of us to get attention for our business. Um, it's very inexpensive to do social media. And again, what you said, people want to do business that they, they know, they want to do business with someone they like. And if they see you on Facebook and they see your kids and they see, you know, that you're just a normal person, right. just like everyone else, right. uh, there's a trust factor there. They feel like they know us, Absolutely. even if it's just through Facebook. Absolutely. No, I can't speak for myself because, you know, I put myself out there and I share, you know, my life. And, and I can tell it just I have not only made clients, but, you know, friends for life. And people do business with me just because they like to do business with me because we're friends. This is priceless. Yes, right. Yes. It is priceless. So tell me a little bit as a mother of five, like you say, like how how have you that balance work and home over the years? You know, because so yes, I really do have five kids. I have four of my own and a stepdaughter that was four when I got married. So I really am a mom of five, and very proud of that. Um, I love my kids. They're the most important thing in my life. And now that they're adults, I can really appreciate them. Because you are empty nest right now. I'm an empty nest. Oh, my God. And um, I have three girls in college. I have my stepdaughter just got married. I have I'm two girls that are going to study abroad in Italy this summer. And I have two daughters moving to L.A. So you can see my plate is full at home. Wow. Um, but it's all great. Uh, with the two graduations from college, I will really be celebrating since I'm paying for that all by myself and um, so proud of my daughters they are doing amazing things you I thought I was raising three female CEOs and I ended up raising three artists so uh, and you know what I never wanted them to go in the limousine business honestly right. I think the limousine business is wonderful but it's also really hard you know we're open 24 7 we're driving precious cargo uh, there's always the human element and so I told my kids, look, if you want to come into the family business, that's fine. But study whatever you want to study. Yes, I have one son, and he is working for me. He's been promoted three times, and uh, the company can't run without him. Honestly, he's just fantastic. That's amazing. And no one is more surprised than me, okay? My son used to stay up all night playing video games and sleeping all day, okay? Somehow, this all worked it's out. Shift. It it was, shifted. It yeah. And, uh, you know, he's... I have to say he's he's probably smarter than me because he's 23 and he's making decisions that I don't think I made until I was in my 30s. So I have to really uh, I, I really appreciate him and and I, it's so much fun working with my son and uh, watching him grow. That's so awesome. Listen, the apple doesn't come far from the tree, you know. I'm sure you know you have this beautiful mom, it's smart, and I'm sure that is a lot to do, you know, with what he is right now. Right? Thank you. So, what's coming up for Christina in 2019? You are busy, busy lady. So, what else is coming up for you? So, yes, you've heard that I'm very busy at home with all the kids' activities. Uh, but I also have some really exciting news. Uh, so, I own my building in Sterling, Virginia. I bought that land and built my own facility 
um, you know, 15 years ago, and that's where we do all of our maintenance on our, our vehicles. So we have uh, 10 mechanics, we have a car wash, we're open 24 seven. And so my fleet of 250 vehicles comes all the way back to Sterling, Virginia for maintenance. So on April 1st, I acquired a maintenance facility in Maryland. Oh. And that means that all my buses in Maryland and DC will no longer have to be brought back to Sterling, Virginia. So that they stay in Maryland. They're already parked in Maryland because I have a, a facility, I have a rental facility uh -huh. in Maryland, but I didn't have a shop, a right. maintenance facility. Uh -huh. So this one decision that we made is going to save us $500,000 a year. Wow. Because we won't have to pay all those drivers to shuttle the buses. We won't have to pay tolls, fuel, wear and tear on the vehicles. So we're really excited about that. And then my shop in Virginia, we're going to turn into a profit center and we're going to be doing work on other people's buses. So we're already washing other people's buses uh -huh. and we also dump them. We have a bathroom facility where we can dump the buses. And so we're already doing that. So oh. now we can do maintenance on all those buses. And um, it's really exciting because um, I, I can't believe I didn't think of this years ago, but a friend of mine came to me who owned a facility in Maryland and he said he wanted to retire and would I consider taking over his his shop and uh, it really was a dream come true and uh, we've put in a team there and we're just so excited about that opportunity. That's so awesome Christina. Thank I'm you. so excited so, for you. A lot of good things coming you know things happen like that. I believe in coaches. I have a business coach, a life coach, I have a speech coach, I have a personal trainer it takes a village to raise me, right, and keep me sane. So one day my life coach was driving to see me in Virginia, and his car broke down on Route 7. And he called me really upset. He said, look, I'm really sorry. My car broke down. I'm so mad. My day is ruined. And I said, listen, call a tow truck. Have your car towed to my facility in Virginia. When you get here, we're, we're going to fix your car, and I'll give you one of my town cars to take home until your car is ready. And he was like, oh, my God, you just changed my day. And I said, well, don't tell anyone I did that because then all my friends are going to call me. Right, right. But that's what we have the capacity yeah. to do. It's hard. And that's, that's really powerful. That's impressive. So I'm going to ask this personal question. I'm sure everybody wants to hear that. So, you know, you're so busy. And I'm sure just, I don't know, even how you can sleep with all those ideas, you know, all those things that you do. So do you have time just to date? Because you're single now, right? That's right. Yeah. Do you have time to go out and date? So I am not dating right now. Um, by choice. By choice. By choice. Yes, of I, course. Look at this beautiful woman. <laughs> I have been separated eight years, divorced six, and I have I have dated. Um, but I decided to take a break from that for a while, and um, I've actually never been happier. I just love my freedom, and I've... I've gotten to know myself, and I've been doing a lot of personal development on myself. You know, I, I, I've been doing a lot of meditation, and I, That's I do awesome. yoga, I eat healthy, I exercise, and I can do whatever I want, whenever I want, and that that is just so fun and enjoyable. Have that time for yourself. Right? I think it's important at this stage of my life, especially with my kids, with all their transitioning, and my business, with all of the exciting things going on at work. It's just great to kind of focus right. on those things right now. Um, am I ever going to date again? Of course. Of course and, you will. You know, honestly, it's my goal to get remarried because I, I would like to experience true love before I die. And, uh, you know, I don't want to grow old all by myself. But yeah. for now, my focus is on my business and my kids. And um, I'm, really, I'm really in a good place. That's really, great, really happy. I told you all, Christina is such an inspiration. And, you know, I can go on and on and on here about her. And I really mean it. You know, when I start to talk about her, I just, you know, I have tears in my eyes because she is an inspiration. And I always tell you, like, you know, we should be you, do you, to stay true. You know, if I have to choose to be someone else that was me, I would just be just like you. <laughs> I'd love to be you. <laughs> Because you are this amazing woman, successful, humble, she's grounded. If you'd never met Christina in person, you only see her on events, you don't realize how humble she is. She's just like, you know, 
I, I just, I even can explain how amazing you are. I feel so blessed Thank you. that, you know, not only we connected 12 years ago in a business level, but today I feel like I can call you as a friend Absolutely, too. Yes. You know, it's a blessing. And I really appreciate you taking the time to be here tonight because I know how busy you are. And this is a blessing, not only for me, but for a lot of people at home right now, business, you know, women, entrepreneur. Because like I say, being a business owner is not easy. So my biggest challenge is we don't have enough drivers. And uh, this has been going on for years. But it just keeps getting worse and worse. There are more, you know. Can you share that with There's me? more opportunities for drivers now, especially with Amazon hiring drivers, that we're all fighting for this little labor pool. And the last time I had dinner with my girlfriends, including Kula, uh, it turned into a mastermind. And these beautiful women, friends of mine, sat there and gave me the best ideas about how I can recruit, where to do it, and they started helping me infiltrate these different communities in, in the Washington area. So that's the power of just, you know, trusting your friends, other business that's owners, true. they're all business owners pretty much yeah. in our little group. Yeah, absolutely. And um, asking for help when you yeah. need it. Yeah. So Christina, so like with that being said, you know, if someone is watching this video, if they know someone, can you explore a little bit more, you know, what is going to be a good fit, who okay. is out there, just so people so understand? So we have two types of drivers. We have drivers that uh, drive, most, the only types of drivers we need are bus drivers. We have plenty of limousine and sedan and van drivers. We need bus drivers with the commercial driver's license, CDL. So half of those drivers are driving a bus for a customer like a university or maybe a corporate client or metro shuttle and they're going to have the same schedule every day and then the other half of those drivers are what we call charter drivers and those drivers uh, pretty much are on standby six days a week but for that particular driver we're going to guarantee fifty thousand dollars a year wow. but honestly those drivers are making anywhere between fifty and eighty thousand dollars a year so it's a really great job if you want to put in a lot of hours uh, with that being said, our busy seasons are spring and fall. So you're always going to probably work 60 hours a week in spring and fall. And in the summer and winter, you're probably going to work 40 hours a week. But uh, we're very flexible. We understand people have families and they need time off. Uh, the one thing you could say about Rest in Limousine is we are the most flexible transportation company you're ever going to find. Uh, we have lots of women drivers. We have, I have one of my best drivers. He's uh, retired. And he said, Christina, do you know why I work for you? And I said, no, please tell me. He said, because you guys are flexible. My mom's in a nursing home, and when I need to take care of my mom, you give me the day off. He says, no one does that. And for that, I get this wonderful, loyal, amazing driver who uh, is really high quality, but appreciates us too. That's awesome. I know that you take good care of your people too. I know. <laughs> So folks, yeah, so if you watch this video, if you know someone actually that well, it's a good fit, you just, you know, just ask them to contact Rustin Limousine, right? Yes, uh, RustinLimo.com, they can apply online, and um, a great lead for us would be a school bus driver. I know you want your kids to be picked up every morning, and you right. may not want to refer right. to school bus drivers, but just to give you an idea, they make about 22000 a year, and we pay fifty. So. Wow. Um, we also have job. great benefits and we have a matching 401k plan and every day is different at Rust Limousine. One day you're driving seniors, the next day you're driving movie stars, the next day you're driving a sports team. Uh, we handled job. the Embassy of Ireland's St. Pat Patrick's Day festivities. They had probably 15 cars for 10 days and we, we didn't get the whole thing but we were part of that and our drivers got to drive in a motor pool which they love. and. Um, you know, it's just an exciting business. I'm sure. I'm sure, especially because you're running this business. <laughs> I make it even more excited. So, any other thing that you want to add so the way we can end the video? But this was so amazing. You know, I would add another thing. I would say that, you know, as women, we have to take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when my children were younger, I felt like I had two jobs. You know, I worked all day at work and then I'd go home and I had four kids running around that wanted everything from me and it was like having two jobs and so what I decided a long time ago was that I would get a massage once a week and that one hour was just for me you know that one hour where someone's taking care of Christina 
because uh, as moms and business owners, often we, we don't take care of ourselves and then we get sick. I see this all the time. We neglect ourselves. And sometimes you know, we start to think that we, you know, selfish. If we put ourselves first, Scott always tell me this. It's so true. Happy wife, happy life. When I feel when I'm good with myself, when I have balance, I'm doing my own things. I'm also a better wife. I'm a better mom. It's just a better business owner, right? And so I think, Sheila, are you getting a massage once a week? No, I'm not. Shame on you. I know, right? Oh I'm my going gosh. to hug you and call you and... <laughs> It'll change your life. I know, I should. Yeah, you're completely right. Yes. You know, you're completely right. I should get a massage. Once Make it week. 90 minutes. I know, I can't do it. <laughs> massage for me, that'd be 90 minutes. You're kidding? <laughs> 60 minutes is just like, it's not a lot. You know, but you're right. Thank you for, you know, saying that. I'm going to just have this as a little note. It reminds me every week to have a massage. That's amazing. Christina, thank you so much. Again, You're so welcome. You know, I really appreciate it. Folks, I hope you enjoy, you know, this talk. You know, this is all about inspired you all. And again, it, this has been amazing, you know, since I started to do let's, let's Keep It Real. Because like I say, we all different people. But in the end of the day, we deal with the same problem different times of our lives, right? right? doesn't matter if it's just, you know, personal or business. And then coming here, sharing, being vulnerable, you know, it's been so amazing, not only helping me, but helping others as well. So I really appreciate you coming here tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much. And folks, I hope you enjoyed the video and enjoy the rest of the week. And just remember, be you, do you, and stay true. I love you all. Bye-bye. Thank you, Christina. Muito obrigada. Muito.